Right, guys, joining me now is journalist, author, and football philosopher extraordinaire, Raphael Hornigstein. How are we doing, Raphael? Very well, thank you. I didn't know about the philosophy bit. You have to tell me. <laughs> well, uh, one piece of your work here is presented proudly right behind me. Klopp, Bring the Noise, uh, your new book on Jurgen Klopp. Um, why did you write it now? What prompted you to do that? Well, I didn't write it now. It was a long, uh, lengthy process, really, that started in the summer of 2016. Um, that's when I signed the deal, not really knowing, you know, how much of a success, if any, Jurgen Klopp would have. The first season or first half of the season had gone pretty well, but it ended without a trophy. And I was pretty confident that, uh, you know, he would continue and have a, have a good career. Um, and maybe it's gone a little bit uh, slower uh, and uh, not quite explosively as some of the Liverpool supporters have hoped for, but I think there is enough to suggest that he will be successful. And for me, the the most fun part of the book is actually talking to um, players, former players, the people at Liverpool, the people at Dortmund, people at Mainz, to really understand a bit more about his idea, his football, but also about football on a whole. That's always the most rewarding part of writing a book for me dive a little bit deeper and really understand what it is these guys are doing and how they're seeing football and how they are um, making their ideas uh, become reality. Well, you mentioned that, that you thought maybe it would have gone a bit quicker, his tenure in Liverpool. How, what do you make of his, his uh, time in charge so far? Well, I think he's still broadly on course. Um, you know, he's come in to, with a brief to take Liverpool back to the top of uh, English football to establish them once again as a Champions League force, to of course win stuff, to of course one day challenge for the Holy Grail, which uh, in Liverpool terms is is the Premier League. And I think that realistically inside the club, they didn't believe that it would necessarily happen much quicker. I think just externally, the hype uh, that, that followed, followed him and followed his appointment perhaps suggested that it'd be, he'd be an overnight success. But I, I, I believe that, having spoken to the people within the club, that they are really, really happy with him. They feel that the club is in safe hands, that they are making steady progress, that they're getting closer and closer to where they have to be. And they're really consolidating. Uh, and I think if they were, again, to finish in the top four, which is going to be very difficult. Thing. So I think he is he's more or less doing what the club wants him to do. They're very happy with him. I think just maybe the fans are a bit more impatient than that. Well, and I mean, some critics have basically said he's just a, another Brendan Rodgers. He still has the defensive issues that Brendan had. Um, what do you make of that? Is he, has he really improved Liverpool that much? Because in the season with Suarez and Sturridge uh, sc scoring loads of goals, they had a sort of similar thing where they got really close to the title. Um, is Klopp really that much better than uh, what Rodgers did? Well, in terms of results, um, they're experiences so far are comparable, although Rodgers, of course, never made it to any finals. Um, Liverpool, as you said, came very close that year. Klopp finished uh, fourth in his full season, first full season, which um, sounds a bit of a disappointment because they started so well. But I think before the start of the season, people would have said that is actually a, a good success. Um, and I think the difference is not so much one in results right now, but the difference is in one in, in standing and stature. I think the owners, um, FSC, were never as confident that Brendan Rodgers would really be the transformative manager, the guy who would take control of a club like Liverpool over five, six, maybe seven years and deliver um, the club in a much better place. Do you think he can ever get near where City and United are? Can he ever actually get close to winning the title? Well, it will be difficult because Liverpool starts in a disadvantage every single year. Um, they start in the knowledge that uh, even if they are to spend big, the two Manchester clubs will outspend them by two, maybe 300 million uh, over the course of two transfer windows every year. But, uh, you know, the challenge is for him to somehow make up for that uh, through his force of personality, through maybe special togetherness, a special kind of energy that maybe he will be able to create uh, in conjunction with the fans. With the city of Liverpool, I think they are um, looking at what he had achieved at Dortmund and at Mainz and believe that there are similarities and maybe similar synergies that they can work with to make up that financial disadvantage. Klopp could maybe try and have seven, a seven-year career, a seven-year tenure 
at Liverpool and then call it a day. Do you? Why do you think that? Well, I don't know. I mean, a lot will depend on uh, how he gets on at Liverpool. If after seven years the club say, "Oh, fine, your seven years are over. Whew, we're happy to get rid of you," then uh, of course he'd be very tempted to call it a day. But if in a couple of years' time the club feel that they're so successful and so happy with what he's done that they want to renew for another five, six years, then uh, I think it'd be hard for him to turn down. I was just thinking in the back of my mind that maybe somewhere deep down he has this idea, you know, if there's only three clubs I'll manage, mine, Dortmund and Liverpool, that would be a pretty cool career. And of course, he had seven years each in those first two clubs. So um, the fact that his contract was renewed until 2022 which would make it another seven years uh, as well at Liverpool, uh, just got me thinking that maybe sort of that, that is kind of an unspoken uh, career plan. But I don't think right now he's actually decided what's going to happen because he doesn't, I think, look that, that far ahead into the future. Next season, uh, Liverpool have Naby Keita coming in, Emre Chan probably leaving, Coutinho, somebody that they probably or might sell. I actually think they look better without Coutinho because he doesn't quite fit into that exact style he plays, even though he's a brilliant player. Um, what do you think uh, Liverpool will be like next season? Well, I think with, if Coutinho were to leave, then of course that would uh, enable them to spend really big on, I think, upgrading uh, the team throughout. I think you need to get better solutions in sort of the unfashionable areas. I think they're still not 100% sure about the goalkeeping situation. They're hoping that uh, Karius might uh, emerge as a solution. Um, I mean, having him seen at Mainz, I think there is enough reason to suggest, but of course he needs to show that he can cope with the pressure and with the style in the Premier League. Uh, it's no secret that uh, in the centre-back positions, Liverpool really need to strengthen. And then I think you're looking at holding midfield, especially with Sean leaving. There's a real uh, requirement to upgrade the options there as well, and perhaps even a uh, a number nine, a big number nine, even though Klopp's been reluctant to, to look at that, then Liverpool will be, have a, a much better uh, opportunity to find success because you can't rely on three or four players carrying you throughout the season. You need to have more depth, and I think that's a lesson that um, FSG and Liverpool have learned in the past, and they just need to now uh, put the money where their mouth is. Well, maybe they'll do it in January. Uh, I think it's unlikely, but FSG, they, they might even give him a little Christmas present. And uh, of course, if anyone wants a Christmas present, we have the ideal one here behind me. Klopp, bring the noise. Uh, thanks for joining us, Raphael. I uh, hope the book does well. I'm sure it will. And uh, hope to talk again soon. Thank you very much.